happening. Okay, we'll get going. And I'm just going to put me up there so I look in the camera occasionally. And slideshow. I don't want the. Okay, that should be good enough. Let's give it a go. That is not what I wanted. Let's swap displays. Okay, can everyone see my screen as in member town hall, full screen, no PowerPoint? Yes. Okay, great. Hi everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we're going to be going talking about the leader update, um, which is extremely simple, the new bylaws and a very quick demo of the AMS. Um, there are a number of slides and I want to leave time for questions at the end. Um, we've got about an hour scheduled, so the slides should take around half an hour. Um, I will try to make them as quick as possible. Um, do um, pop into chat any questions you might have and we'll address those questions at the um, conclusion of the slides. Right, the leaders as members. Leaders must be a member for the new AMS. That's pretty much a given. Um, what has been um, difficult is um, we needed to find out what the members actually thought and overwhelmingly the members didn't want uh, complimentary membership for leaders. However, the board has, um, we're still in the process of deciding completely, but I think at the moment we're leaning towards having a both a financial and a complimentary membership type. And that's what's in the bylaws draft at the moment. So what you need to do is if you are not a member and you are a leader, you need to choose financial or complementary membership before the AMS goes live. We will be following up with those members, also those leaders who are not members. It is only a minority of leaders. The new bylaws, there is a QR code on the screen. Um, if you click on, like you put your camera up to that, uh, it'll take you to the latest draft. The draft is a moving target. There are issues with this draft and we will be getting a legal review done. In fact, the board meeting later this, um, in a few hours time, um, is there to decide whether or not we're going to push the um, bylaws in their current state to the uh, lawyers for a review. So the settings are based around our existing bylaws or the member survey. The member survey asks five important questions. One is whether or not leaders should be members. Most people said yes. Um, if membership was offered on a complimentary basis, should this membership class have a voting right? And the answer is no. Um, was there a support for a complimentary membership class, regardless of whether it's for leaders or not? And the answer was yes. There was. Um, it was okay. It was about 63% of people said that there was um, there was support for it. So what are we doing? Well, there's, we've had legal advice that there are four or five possible paths. Um, Dawn, can you make um, admit everyone? Thank you. Yeah, Appreciate I'm doing that. It. Fantastic. Um, the most likely one um, is that we need to get more or less a unanimous agreement from the previous directors to vote yes for adoption of the new bylaws. The reason why this is possibly legal is that it has been done before. It also, all of these directors have been voted on by the membership over a long period of time, um, particularly since elections started in 2008. The, the reality is, is that this may not work because we haven't heard from a couple of the directors in a number of years, but we're hopeful that we'll actually get a yes vote out of this. If it doesn't happen, plan B, Plan B, where's my mouse, is a member vote. This is just extraordinarily unlikely to succeed. Um, the most number of votes we've ever had was for last year's general election for the board members. Um, and Dawn, correct me if I'm wrong, it was about 1,100 votes. Is that correct? Yeah, and that's the most by far. Like elections usually, it's kind of sad. It's only like 500 people vote. Yeah. So... We have 5,970 something or 35 members at the moment. We're nearly at 6,000. We need 50% plus one members to approve. 
This is under Delaware law. This is a right we cannot take away from you. But it also is the threshold for you guys, if you want to actually uh, amend our bylaws and put up a proposal and get the members to vote on it, you also need to come up to this level. Um, the reality is, is that we don't believe this is possible. Even if we hold it open for months on end, even if we hassled you every single day, we just don't believe enough people will vote. We will try. The reality is, we have to try. Um, I would love for this to go through and everybody who is eligible to vote will vote. It would, that is my ideal. Um, it's just, it's so much more than we've ever had vote before that I just, I just don't know. Um, let's hope plan A works. If this doesn't work, then we've got plan C. We can petition the Delaware Chancery Court. This is, we're um, incorporated in Delaware. The Chancery Court looks after corporations. Um, we can go to court and say, we tried this, we tried that, and we did it in good faith. Um, we tried to comply with Delaware law and it just didn't work. Here is the facts, here are the results, and we would like to adopt these bylaws, which by the way, you know, are the, more or less the template Delaware bylaws. Um, we're reasonably certain because this has happened a number of times in the past, um, and it happens almost several times a year, that this pathway will work, but it's going to be costly. And I think honestly, we have to try plan A and plan B before we go to this one. There are other options, and we don't want to really talk about them in great detail because, quite frankly, they're, they're sort of gaming the legal system, and I don't really want to go down that pathway, and that is to create a new entity. You can do this, but we don't want to do this. We, we might want to do this in the future because we want to have a federated OWASP, but um, we don't want to do it because we want, don't have bylaws that work. That's not the right reason for doing this, okay? So, um, this is the absolute last chance, and it means that we failed at getting the Delaware Chancery Court to um, agree to take us with new bylaws and a new certificate of incorporation. So, what are the changes? Oh, sorry, when is it happening? The board ratification is um, likely to um, start in July. Um, we have to get the, um, the legal advice on what it is that we changed. Is that okay? Because if you look at the actual Word document, um, I'll just show it to you. It's, um, you'll have to excuse the uh, noisy exhaust. It seems like everyone here has broken their cars. Okay, so to give you an idea, we have lots of little changes all over the place, mostly formatting, but there are some really big questions that needed to be answered. There is a PDF for this that is clean um, that you can access through that QR code above. The, um, the reality is, is that this um, is a lot of work and we're not quite there yet. Um, so we're looking at this from the point of view of um, getting this reviewed by the lawyers in the next week or so. I'm on leave. When I come back from leave, I would imagine that we've got the review back from the lawyers saying yes or no. Um, we had to change a number of things, like it actually had the ability to do proxy voting. Under the Delaware law, we cannot have the board of directors with proxy votes. It's just illegal. Um, we knew that from previous legal advice, um, and it's well known. So, directors, we wanted to keep the same for um, OS members, for example. Um, so, we're not going to permit proxy voting um, just simply because it, it leads to some negative behavior occasionally, um, such as let, slate voting and things like that. Uh, we want people to exercise their own vote based around informed consent. We don't want people to just simply give the vote to someone else who then manipulates the organization. So we have removed proxy voting in its entirety. We didn't have it before, we won't have it in the future. So um, 
we're looking at basically if that fails, the board ratification fails, we're looking at a member vote somewhere in the range of August to October. We will hold it open for as long as we think we need it. Um, as soon as it seems likely that we're not going to get many more votes, um, we'll just close the vote. We'll probably hold it open for at least 30 days and possibly as many as 90. Um, that way no one can complain that we didn't try. We must try. It's really important that we get members to say yes or no to this particular set of bylaws. Failing that, we'll go to the Chancery and November onwards we will actually uh, go to court and see if we can get it changed. I'm hoping Plan A works and we're on our way in July. The reality is, is until this is done, the board really can't pass any more policies or amend any policies. It's very unlikely that we will be able to pass a budget. Um, it, we will be electing the directors as planned because we've always done it this way. And we've got an election policy that we've been holding it under for the last few years that has not changed. We're going to hold it under the same circumstances as the last four or five years um, and the same deadlines and the same mechanisms with the same number of seats available as we would normally have. Um, we're assuming that sometime before the directors take their seats on January 1st that we will have valid bylaws and therefore we can confirm uh, all of the previous votes from the previous boards and we can confirm the election policy and therefore the, the new directors can be seated. So Dawn, um, how many vote, uh, directors do we have up um, this year? Uh, actually, we have three, uh, are up Martin, uh, Jubin and Bill. Martin is not eligible to run again. Now, I can't confirm if Bill or Jubin are running again. That's, you know, that's not official, okay. but three this time. Okay. So for those of you who are interested in running, um, being in the year where there's three directors is relatively, um, it is a little bit harder to get elected, but it is worth it. Um, if you want to stand and make a change to OWASP, I heartily recommend being on the board of directors. It helped my understanding how businesses run, and it can actually lead you to other boards and other professional organizations in the future. Um, it was my first board appointment, and I've now been appointed to two other boards. So if you are interested in moving on up, um, do stand for the board, especially if you've got something that you can um, bring to the table for OWASP. We really need active board members who are into fundraising. Um, and so if you are interested in nominating yourself or having people nominate you for the board, please do so. The uh, nominations open on August 15th or the nearest business day there too. So, it's okay. Van Dan, I'm just going to step in for one sec. I would really like to see this open up again. The last two years, we literally didn't, almost didn't have elections because we it, there were three spots, there were three people. Then someone did a fourth. <coughs> it used to be when I, because I've been doing it for years, 20 people wanted mm. to stand on the board. And um, so I, I'm going to start. I got to get the WASPI out first because too much going out at the same time. I'm going to start promoting this through social media. You need to be an active member, I believe. I want to check the date. There's a date since September 30th. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's no gray area on that one. But that's pretty much the only requirement is to be an OWASP member. Yeah. So, you need to be an OWASP member in good standing for 12 months. And there's a particular date for that um, anniversary. September 30th, I believe, but I'll double check because we didn't make some changes last year. Yeah. Okay, so what are the changes to the bylaws? The first is they are absolutely 100% compliant with the general Delaware General Corporation law. Um, it gives, the, that law gives members specific rights. We cannot take away some of these rights. For example, if we decide to merge, like just for example, with the Linux Foundation, we would actually have to get you to vote for it. Um, it's not something the board of directors can actually do at this very moment in time. So at the end of the day, basically, the Delaware General Corporation law gives you rights that cannot be taken away. And they include being able to vote for a new bylaws and new certificate of incorporation. Um, we didn't have that in the previous bylaws. So they were more or less invalid, even though they weren't established correctly anyway. 
So we would have had to have done something like this at some point. It would have just been better if the original um, bylaws, when they were implemented, actually had the, um, the, the board given the right to amend the, the actual bylaws. That wasn't granted, and so that's why we need to replace them. A modern problem that is actually pretty much post-2017 is antitrust compliant. We need to make sure that our directors can work with each other. Um, we must comply with federal trade law in the United States, and it allows people who are in direct competition with each other um, to work on the same board, because their fiduciary duty is to OWASP and not their employer. So we need to make sure that we've got antitrust mechanisms in place, and so you'll see us do, like if you come to a board meeting, you'll see us read out an antitrust statement at the beginning, and it'll become part of the director's agreement. We will be having just two member classes, but it'll be the first time in a long time that we've had accurate descriptions of our membership classes. Um, we will be having individual membership classes, which will incorporate one year, two year, lifetime, distinguished lifetime, student, and so on. And also a complementary um, membership class that will be, and you'll see this, a non-voting one. Now, it doesn't mean that it will only be for leaders. It could be the board, uh, future board, this board, could decide the complementary becomes a needs-based system, um, but it will allow complementary memberships to exist in the bylaws, whether or not that they are for a particular class of um, folk, like such, for example, as leaders, or whether it's a needs-based system where it's essentially trying to promote our mission because you need some sort of assistance to become a complementary member uh, rather than a financial member. That is entirely up to the board. So fundamentally what we're doing is we're having just two classes and you will see that one of the classes that we have at the moment, corporate members, let me just go to the corporate members, Corporate members will become corporate supporters. I believe this is still in the air and the board will make a decision on this soon. And in fact, it may be as soon as today. Um, traditionally, even though corporate members have had votes since 2006, they have rarely exercised their voting rights and they really can't change the outcome of an election because there's just so few of them. So what we'd like to do instead is actually increase the um, the packages that these folks have, and they become corporate supporters. Um, the, fundamentally, it won't change their relationship with us at all. It just means that they won't be end up as a member. Um, there's only 70 of them at the moment. And in many cases, if you think about it, um, folks like Google and Microsoft probably don't want to have someone in their organization cast a vote on their behalf. And that's the only major difference we're talking about here. So there's no real benefits to a corporate member to being a member. So let's make them corporate supporters and provide more, more things that they're actually interested in. So we will be working with our corporate members to discuss this change um, and very soon. Um, I'm working with Kelly at the moment to revise the corporate um, benefits packages. For example, gold and platinum will have access to the career fair when it comes live. And I'll talk you, to you about what the career fair looks like. Just an FYI on, I on that, Andrew. I think since I've been doing elections, I want to say one time they asked how to vote. All the years for anything yeah. that they ever did. One person. Yeah. Uh, and one vote out of 650, which is like pretty much our standard amount, or one vote out of 1,100 votes, which was last year, can't change the outcome of an election uh, unless it's a knife edge. Um, and it's never been a knife edge. <laughs> So we've had very close third and fourth spots decided by less than 20 votes, but it's still 20 votes, not one. Okay, so the reality is, is that um, I don't believe this is a bad change. I think it's a good change for the corporate members because they'll have greater access to us. Uh, we can scale better because we'll be providing uh, benefits at the top end and providing a more scalable uh, silver package. Um, voting versus non-voting. Um, what we'll be doing is that individual members will be uh, a voting membership class as they are today, and complementary members will become non-voting members. This was overwhelmingly the choice of the members that we surveyed. Um, 
like I'm talking high, uh, sorry, low 80% um, type of area. So the reality is, is that complementary members get all the benefits of being an OWASP member other than they can't choose the um, directors or they can't become a committee member or a board member. If you want to become a committee member or a board member, you must become an individual member before you nominate and that will actually be changed in the new bylaws. At the moment, it's all over the shop as to whether or not a complementary member um, can become a board member or a, a committee member. It and was just before the committee part. There is a vote that was taken that's listed by the boards and that you have to be a paid member, individual member to be on the board. They did a, an official vote several years ago. Yeah, but that's actually the law as well. Okay. So yeah. the committees, um, there was a lot of confusion about whether or not you could actually nominate whilst not a member. This actually changes it for both of them. If you are nominating for a position on the board or a committee, you need to be a member, an individual member. Okay. So we talked about corporate supporters. Now, subsidiaries, we're talking about federated OWASP. We're not ready to discuss this in detail at the moment. We do need a solution for OWASP China. OWASP China is a very, very, very active chapter. It's one of the busiest chapters in all of OWASP. They have plenty of regional events throughout the country. They meet upwards of 20 times a year. They are definitely one of our most active chapters, and it's entirely because they're doing it themselves. We can't really support them. Um, it's very difficult to work with them uh, with payments. It's very difficult for them to access Gmail and Google without using VPNs, which is essentially more or less breaking the law. So what we want to do is basically make it possible for OS China to stand alone. We don't know how to do this right now, and we're still working on it. But I'd like the bylaws to support this, and there is one phrase in there that allows it now. Our previous one did not allow this. I would suggest that this may become a reality before the end of the year, but don't, don't think about it as being a possible, possibility now. Our main goal is to get a solution for OS China, but also to think about the more general case. How would it work for New Zealand? For example, they have GST tax rules that we can't satisfy. And it may make sense for OS New Zealand to be an entity on its own. It may make sense for the OS EU entity to be an entity on its own. But how much of on, on its own? We need to do some consultation with like-minded um, non-profits on how they manage their entities. Um, and we need to make sure that it works for both the entity and us. It can't be a one-way street where we lose all of our funding and or the organization that starts up doesn't comply with our code of conduct or our bylaws or our core values. There would be nothing worse than, say, for example, having OS Albonia and they're raising kittens and not doing application security. So there is a lot of work to be done here. Um, our main focus is OS China, but if we're doing it for OS China, it should be the same rules for any other entity we create. We had a bit of a problem in 2020. Um, and I'm not going to go into it, it's past history, and quite frankly, um, the person involved has, um, uh, they've finished their, their exclusion. Um, quite frankly, that's a time period that I don't want to revisit ever. But what this bylaws does is it takes us to the standard way that Delaware law allows us to suspend or remove a director who is not upholding their um, fiduciary duty or they're bringing the organization into disrepute i.e they're they're not doing their director duties um, the bar for removal and suspension is extremely high it is not easy but it's actually possible whereas before the only thing we could really do under delaware law was to uh, recommend to members that the director is removed and we felt that under the same circumstances that it's very difficult to get the bylaws passed, this would never pass. And therefore, there would be no um, prohibition against directors acting up once in power. So this is a much more direct pathway. The bar is high um, and it is there to protect the organization and not necessarily the director. Um, as always, directors have directors and officers insurance, DNO insurance, to protect them, um, but they need to actually adhere to the director's code of conduct. 
they need to actually uphold the fiduciary duty to the organization and they need to be able to demonstrate that they've tried their very best. It wasn't because they were ill-informed, it wasn't because they actually had a different agenda as everybody else, or they're just acting up. So the directors and officers insurance is there to protect good faith directors doing their job. This means you can disagree with the other directors, but you're not there to uh, destroy the organization. Finally, uh, by finally I mean uh, it's 2022 and we can now accept e-votes and remote meetings, just like we've been doing since the very first days of OWASP. So our previous bylaws didn't permit this. <laughs> So we've been holding invalid um, board meetings forever. Uh, the only ones that were really valid were the ones held at um, conferences, and we should have been holding an annual general election then. Um, who knew? So we now can do this. Yay. <laughs> so I can tell you that there was a lot of problems with our previous bylaws. This one allows us to actually do e-votes and meetings, and they hold the same weight as if you were holding them in person. Um, so there are going to be some policies around these. For example, we have a procedure for e-voting that says that there is a seven-day discussion period. So the people who are sponsoring it have to sponsor in second, then there is a discussion period, but the vote is open. If a director feels that they're informed enough to be able to vote one way or the other, they can vote immediately. If they're informed enough at the very end, they can vote or they can abstain. So that sort of stuff doesn't belong in the bylaws. Um, what does belong in the bylaws is the fact that we can actually do this. One of the things that I've been doing and my predecessors did as well was often we would raise business and theoretically under the previous bylaws I would have had, to, to be frank, we should have been working through directors. Um, but that doesn't really work with a volunteer board. So what this does is it allows me to raise business, but I am not a voting member. I am not counted as part of the head count. So if we have seven directors, I am not one of those seven. But it allows me to raise business. It allows me to run the, the, um, the, the meetings in the absence of the chair or if the chair decides that the, um, the meeting is best run by me. The vast majority of nonprofit organizations do it this way, including the Linux Foundation and the .NET Foundation. So all this does is it makes it official that I'm an ex officio director. And that all it means is that I can raise business on my own. I still need to get a support like a sponsor and a second, but it uh, validates what I have been doing. Almost all of the board votes that have happened over the last two years have been because I've raised them by myself. And I theoretically didn't have the permission to do that. Um, but the reality is I was always able to get support and this just simply makes it, um, this particular change just simply makes it um, possible. Um, the bylaws, which were templated, comes complete with a technical advisory committee. Sharif Mansour, our chair from last year, wants this desperately and has asked for it several times. And I think it would be a really good idea that we divide up um, the, the business side, the fundraising side, the um, governance side, the financial oversight side of the organization's board away from the technical side, those that are essentially guiding the projects and the outreach and the other things. The reality is, is that we don't need this committee. It's available, but it's not mandated. And what it will do is it'll allow people who are interested in participating at a higher level to help set the strategy for OWASP. Now, does this exist? No. Does it need to exist? It probably should. How will it work? We don't know. All it means is the bylaws allow for it. And in the same way, there is a marketing advisory committee. We actually do have a bit of a problem with marketing at the moment in that it is, uh, we don't do it very well. Um, we will try our very best to get up off the ground. Again, this is available, it's not mandated. Um, we may remove this. This hasn't really been discussed heavily at the board level. Um, we, if we just simply say that committees are, can be formed under the committees 2.0 or the, you know, the latest committees policy, we don't need to mention these by name. Amendments. The members in the survey wanted overwhelmingly the ability to modify the bylaws. 
I set up that survey at a time that I didn't know that this was a thing that members cannot have this right taken away from them. You have this right today. Um, there's nothing we can do to stop you from putting up a motion to modify the bylaws or modify the certificate of incorporation. And then if you get enough votes, it'll, it'll happen. It's actually part of Delaware law. And we cannot take that away from you. But what we've decided to do is also delegate it to the board of directors. But what I've tried to do very, very hard within these bylaws is to make the bylaws unnecessary to amend on a regular basis. We've been amending them for ever and ever and ever, and it requires legal review every time we do it to make sure that we're not um, falling afoul of the law. Because the reality is this, the directors typically are not lawyers. I'm not a lawyer. And the Delaware corporate, the G DGCL, the corporate law, is a complicated beast. And it'd be really good for us to make sure that our bylaws are not amended all the time, but our policies might be. And so what we're doing is we're actually allowing the board to modify the bylaws as they have done in the past with a super majority. But these new bylaws are set up in such a way that we shouldn't need to modify them very often at all because they have the settings the members want. And they also have the settings that we've been living with for a long time. So that brings us to the genesis of a lot of this, which is the, mem the new membership platform. The new membership platform is, let me just get rid of that. This is it. Um, this is our staging site. We'll get probably different graphics here, but it is a much newer um, website. It is integrated in every single possible way. Um, it has our major areas, membership, news events, and projects. We'll probably end up having chapters around here a little bit. Um, but what we want to do is basically make sure that um, everybody who has a major element of our mission has a top level call to action that we basically make sure that you can get tools and resources very quickly. You can get into our community and networking really quickly, like our Slack channels, our Twitter and other things. And you can access our free education and training and our training um, offerings. Um, we're obviously going to have um, news articles as we've been doing. Um, this platform supports both regional and global events natively. And so when you go to an event, it will basically replace Meetup and you can register for the event, um, choose your items that you're actually doing, um, and then you'll get a ticket or you'll get access to the actual seminar or whatever the case may be. And so we'll be doing global and regional events through this mechanism. And we're still testing it out, but we're hopeful that we'll be able to replace Meetup. And what that means for chapter leaders is you won't need to update your stuff in two different places. You can just do it through this website. You don't need to edit any markdown or anything. You don't have to worry about the fact that Meetup's um, GraphQL API at the moment is completely broken. And, you know, we've told you in the past, you only need to do it in Meetup or the website. Well, right now you need to do it in the website because Meetup's broken. This will actually mean that we go back to having just one place you need to do it in. We're also um, looking forward to having a much more modern uh, experience. Um, it'll allow you to do things like um, get merch directly from us. You can click here and it'll take you to Amazon. Um, don't, we'll get rid of that before we get going. Um, yeah, we are, there's a lot of changes yet to be made. This is just like step one on yeah. the sense. Like chapters is going to be on top. I already told him that. Okay, good, good. Yeah, because I was I was kind of surprised of what the, he. Yeah, if anything needs to leave this little list news. here, yeah, yeah, lose yeah. news. Um, but for example, this takes you to all of our social media, but this also takes you directly to Amazon Smile. So if you go to smile.amazon.com, I'm also having him put Slack up there. He didn't have Slack. Okay, good. Yeah. So. With this one, um, let me just get my, I 
I'm going to have to wait for this, whatever it is. All right. Um, but it, what it will do is it'll allow you to, um, it allow you to get into Amazon Smile. OWASP actually has an Amazon Smile account. Thank you, Dawn. And so every time you shop from Amazon, you will actually help OWASP out um, to the tune of a few cents per dollar. And so that'll be really good for us as a passive way of uh, us fundraising. And you'll see a lot more focus on fundraising and donations and things like that. Um, we will be doing um, videos. We will be doing uh, a, like a spotlight, a project spotlight um, on a regular basis. This isn't all, all together. This is not exactly how it'll be, but um, we want to make sure that like Van Dana's um, project spotlight is highlighted. Um, if you want to be a project leader into the um, project spotlight, please do contact um, Van Dana. I believe there are open slots for that. Yeah, I've been posting those like once or so a month because there's only like, I think Van Dana 20 something up there. So any new ones or any ones someone wants me to post sooner than later, just give me, just ping me. Yep. And so the other thing that works really well for us is completely integrated. It will replace a number of our backend systems and a lot of our glue. So what this means is that Harold will be available instead of coding all the time, Harold will be available to actually proactively work with um, projects and be that sort of community manager that we're looking for. Um, this is one of the reasons why we want to do this. At the moment, the opportunity cost of having um, staff involved in custom code is so high and this is completely integrated. Um, on top of that, we are going down the pathway of having the Career Centre. Let me just make this bigger for you. So the Career Centre and Professional Development, where two areas that we've got access to, will be launching with the Career Centre. And this will be a, um, a benefit for Gold and Platinum um, members, um, like corporate members or corporate supporters and they will be able to advertise jobs. You can actually put yourself up um, as being interested in a job. So the Career Centre will be able to connect employees and employers, and it will be free of charge to OWASP members, um, corporate supporters. If you're in the um, that gold or platinum level, you will have access to the Career Centre to be able to post jobs, as well as support OWASP other activities as well. So that's a new benefit that's coming up. Um, so the way that all of this works is that groups. So effectively, chapters and projects are groups. So and a group is essentially along the lines of just a simple, these are the members of this group. Now, we're working with the, the folks who are building this out to see if we can get geolocation to work. So it says, here are the local groups for you. But in worst case scenario, it's just like it is today. You have to search out, whereas my, like type in, I live in Colorado Springs, I'll type in Colorado Springs and it'll find you Colorado Springs. For the first time in several years, chapter leaders will know who's in their members. They will be able to post things to their own members. They will be able to schedule their own events without talking to us. They will be able to set up local um, activities such as um, CTFs and hackathons without talking to us. It's going to be fantastic. So this is the reason why we need you to be members because only members can actually do this stuff. If you're a contact, I say, for example, we have a contact that is for um, Joe Bloggs' code shop down the road they can't do anything on this site. They can be a contact that we can, um, you know, literally include in communications, but they can't access any of the features. So to be able to be a leader of a group, you need to be a member. And that's the reason why we're actually asking everyone to be a member. We are working with the vendor at the moment to get SSO. At the moment, the SSO only includes LinkedIn and Facebook and we're not really keen on either of those choices. So what we'll be doing is we'll be, unfortunately, and we're very, very sad about this, but we want to get on with delivering the actual platform and all of its benefits earlier. We'll be creating everybody their own account, and we will be sending you a unique password to um, log into the site. Um, We'll let you manage your own password as soon as you actually uh, get it. You'll be able to change your password as soon as you're on. 
it is unfortunate that it is not integrated with Google. But the other one that was integrated with Google was around eight times more expensive and we just don't earn enough money from membership to be able to justify that other alternative. And it didn't have some of these other functions such as career fair or the ability to manage groups in the way that we would ex um, uh, consider chapters. So it failed the basic functionality test. This one failed our SSO test. Now they are adding Google integration. So at some point within the next year, your user will be able to authenticate using your Google um, credentials. But in the meantime, if you want to link up using LinkedIn or Facebook, you can. Uh, therefore, you won't need to actually have a password. Um, that's up to you. But we're not going to be um, mandating that you have a LinkedIn password or uh, sorry, LinkedIn account or a Facebook account. Um, I'm on the verge of abandoning my Facebook account because I just don't use it. So that as a glance is our new AMS. Um, let me just go back to our slides. We're going to be basically talking about a bunch of stuff that we're retiring. We're trying to do it as automated as possible so you don't have to. Um, one of the problems we had with our previous system is it required the chapter leaders and the project leaders to update the website and that was a manual process and it was horrible and even to this day we have plenty of chapters and committees, sorry, chapters and projects that have not updated their content. They're on the verge of being deactivated because they haven't done that. Um, so we're going to go live with this in August. Um, that is a tentative date at this moment. I really hope it was going to be done by now, but realistically it's probably going to be August. What you need to do is, if you're a member, is you need to check your membership profile and you need to validate your email addresses. So what does this mean? If you go to the OS website, slash membership, and, oh, where is it? I thought it was here. It's under the picture. Sorry, which picture? On the membership page? The mem oh, membership oh, yeah. page. Okay. Yeah, you need to go here. Um, was that actually something that actually had a link? Yeah, sorry. I'm going to put this into chat so everyone has it. This is the link to the member portal. You click there, you choose your um, user, and it pulls up your record. If you think that this all looks great, then you're done. That's all you needed to do is just check your local membership and make sure that it's okay and validate your email address. Okay. If you're elite, so go ahead. Please do that because one of the things like our database that we have, there is so much old email addresses, old information. You know, people used to use their job and they've left that job. So it's really important because it's the same thing when elections come up. Always people say, oh, I didn't get it. If you don't update your data, there's not much I can do. If I don't have the correct information, I, there's not much we can do. And Dawn, consistent email, secondary email address, because people could have multiple records with varying yep. emails. Every time you use a different email, it creates a new record. Which yep. we, yeah, which will hopefully will fix going forward, you know, but that's a whole nother story on that one. Yeah. yeah. So there are slides that Lisa has prepared at the end of this called reference slides. I'll make this presentation available. Um, and, uh, Lisa's given up some really good advice here. So please, if you're a leader or a member and you want to know the exact details that we really care about, um, go to the reference slides section and um, have a read, okay? Um, but what do leaders need to do? We need you, and I mean need you, to update your project or chapter page to know that you're still with us. Um, if you haven't held a meeting within the last 90 days, please go ahead and hold a meeting. You sort of need to hold three meetings a year, and so that's sort of uh, a minimum activity level. Um, if you hold a meeting and you've updated your page, we know that you're with us, and therefore, as we come to decide, is this an active group? 
or not, we will be looking at whether or not you've held any activity in the last 12 to 18 months. And so this is your chance before August to get in another meeting and make sure that you've updated it. If you can't hold a meeting before we go live, at least update your chapter page or your project page. Validate all of the leaders' email addresses in leaders.md. We've got plenty that go to, say for example, it's got a HTTPS and takes you to a LinkedIn profile. That won't work for us. We need to have your email address to be able to associate you with an OWASP email address so that we know that you're a leader. Um, we've got approximately 30 people who've got no email address or a bad email address out of 850. And those people will struggle to be on our new system unless they update their leaders.md file. So if you're one of those affected leaders and you have not put your email address in, we need your email address. Andrew, the other thing is um, just add, uh, for chapters, this is Lisa, sorry. If you um, change the leadership and you just update that file, we won't have you in the database because there is that ticket to submit. It's in the chapter policy. Okay. Um, yeah. So we can how put is, the prop. How can anyone be a leader without having we us not having that email address? Well, it's happened. Let's That's, just let's just say it's happened. <laughs> because the the current leadership can add a person's name and they see the format of the OWASP.org leader, you know, our standard OWASP email format, and they just create one. It's not a valid one. Because as the world is getting active, I'm getting a lot of individuals reaching out to me saying they're contacting the leaders at such and such chapter and nobody's responding. So the, uh, you know, the public at large does contact those leaders with those emails. So oh, without a doubt. Yeah, but I'm getting okay. a lot now. I'm getting a lot of inquiries like, and, um, you know, so if you just add somebody's name there, they'll put a personal email address in the leader file, or they'll just put first name, last name at OWASP.org, and but, it's not about Okay, email. so we so basically what's happening there is is uh, Chapter 101 is not happening. Anyone right. who wants to add new leaders has to contact the foundation, just not throw someone's name up on a piece of paper. Yeah, yeah there's a technique. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's what's yeah. happening. It's it's in People the chapter are not policy. following procedure. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I thought you mean we were setting no, no. them up. I was okay. Like, was no, 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 no. Okay. I, I want to have time um, for sure. questions. Um, we're coming up on the hour. Are there any questions? We've presented a lot of information here, and I will be making at least one of these videos go up online. Um, and be on our YouTube channel so you can review it. The presentation will be made available. The bylaws are available through the QR code. Um, we'll be publicizing that in a blog post shortly, um, so you can get it that way as well. Do we have any questions? You can unmute your microphones and uh, just ask out, or you can type into chat. Hey, Andrew, I've got quite a lot of questions, but I think we're probably out of time right, to cover um, all. Because <laughs> you, you combine bylaws with a um, new association management system, really. So, uh, um, so the question on the bylaws that I have mm -hmm. is, the, uh, is around the uh, voting, right? So mm -hmm. obviously, do it, the plan A that you highlighted, does that actually mean we need to get all the members to vote for it? Plan A is having all of the 30 plus directors that OWASP has ever had to write a letter to the Chancery Court and vote that they accept the new bylaws. Now, that has been done in the past. It is not exactly common, but it does demonstrate that directors that have been voted by the members on a regular basis all agree that the new bylaws are the new bylaws. Now, right. the reality is, is that we've lost contact with a couple of them and i don't know if we're going to be able to get all of them i see okay and um but was there also a version where all the all the members have to vote my question is is it just yes. a simple majority do we need a simple majority plus one vote okay yeah and that i would 
I, I, the realist in me says that that's not possible. The optimist in me says the OS um, community is active and hopefully they will come to the party. Right. Okay, uh, the okay. next question I have is around the meetup and basically does the introduction of uh, the new association management system means that OWASP will be uh, stopping the use of meetup.com as the main event scheduling system? Once we've learned the features of the new platform and we've tested it and people are happy with the new functionality that they can actually get RSVPs and they can hold meetings without having to have meetup in place, then yes. But if it turns out that um, Meetup has some exceptional functionality that um, the new platform doesn't, then maybe we'll make it optional. But I think from the demonstrations we've had, there are it's like 90, 95% of the functionality of Meetup and none of the cost. So the it, Meetup has come very expensive. It's about it's about fifty thousand dollars a year. Right. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm aware of the costs, but I think mm -hmm. these are the costs for the uh, commercial organizations. Don't they have like a non-profit? We're on the non-profit. We We're are the non on the non-profit. <laughs> <laughs> we so are actually it... one of their biggest accounts now. Yep. That we use it so much. Well, we have... there are, as me and Dawn were reviewing and Dawn brought to my attention, there's a lot of meetups that are not being used. Um, so that's, yeah, we, you, yeah. yeah, we're not, if chapters are not using it and it's, you know, we're paying, we're still paying for it. Not you, Sam. <laughs> Sam, you use it all the time. <laughs> so Thomas asked, could we move the meetup members to the new AMS? And the answer is maybe um, we can get manual exports of the, the list of people there. The problem is, is that we have around 90,000 people registered to the various chapters and we don't know when was the last time they actually attended so it may be garbage um, i can figure that out okay good yeah, well I then figure that out. we will try is what i'll say thomas we will try <laughs> also i would do what i did with some sometimes in the past a leader will leave and they have access to a meetup we don't do this anymore and we can't get to it I never shut or close anything without constantly sending, here's a new link, here's a new this. So it's not like we're going to say this week, okay, meetup ends, go here. Mm -hmm. It's going to be quite a while. And I would probably, or Lisa, whoever, will have emails that sent to the leaders to send that they can talk about and, and send to their direct own mailing list. So it's not like going to happen in a week that we just shut down meetup. Okay, yeah. Jubin. Hey, Andrew. Thanks for this. Um, I just wanted to clarify the question Sam asked earlier. So, mm -hmm. so Sam, um, the, just to be clear, we are required to get 50% plus one member to vote. That's not to pass a vote. We just need participation from more than half of our entire community. And then from that, we just need a simple majority to pass it. But but that means whatever figure that Andrew put up, 2,000, some 900 or whatever, is the number of participations we need. Regardless of what their vote is, we need that many to participate under Plan B. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the clarification, Jubin. It's, uh, yeah, I, I, I can understand how challenging this task is, to, you know, bearing in mind that during the board elections, I think we only have about 500 members out of 5,000 members voting, so it's usually less than 15%, 10%. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's sort of sad, actually. Anyway, um, the thing is, is that the call to action for people who are leaders, you can join today as a financial or a complimentary member. And if you join today, you're very likely to have a vote on this, okay? So depending on what you think about the new bylaws or not, you, you wanna be enfranchised, please become a financial or a complimentary member if you're a leader today. Also keep in mind different, if you sign up and become a member, you get to vote in the board elections and the WASP awards. Yep. Yeah, so I have a related question then, uh, Andrew and Lisa, probably to you as well. So does that mean that any new chapter leaders who are signing up to be chapter leaders today, do we ask them to become OWASP members first? Yes. No, uh, 
Well, it would be best if they did. Let's put it that way. We just need them to, all of them, to become members before this goes live. So we should probably not be shy about asking for it. Yeah, because right, there's a retrospective it... exercise, but I understand because we could start by making sure that anyone who's applying to become a chapter leader today, from today, we're going to say, you have to be a member. Choose either you pay and donate to uh, OWAS Foundation, right? And then you need to explain to them that membership fee is a donation. So, right. Uh, and, uh, or, or do a complimentary membership. Yeah, currently today, the policy and the bylaws do not call for that. So I, it can't be, I could be, you know, suggested as it always has been, but it, I can't make them do anything. <laughs> Which all of this is subject to change because now, Based right. on the survey, most of the majority of the community felt that leaders should be paid members, should be members, and but mm. the board hasn't officially voted. Unlikely, the board will go against the community. My opinion, or well, whatever. So all this can change too. Mm. Right, but right, the bylaws right now, you know, leaders don't have to be members. Yeah, but the reality yeah. is, is that we do need them to become members. So we'll have to sort this amount amongst ourselves later. But Sam, I'll get back with you as soon as we've got an, um, an official answer. I think, honestly, the board vote today will give us that clarity. Um, the other thing, realistically, is um, there is a chicken and egg situation becoming a complimentary member. You need to become a member at least once to be a, a leader. And then the second year, you can actually become a complimentary just because of the way it works at the moment. Um, you're essentially renewing your membership as a complimentary. I don't believe you can actually become a complimentary member without being a leader. And you can't be a leader without being a member. So th there is a bit of a check in the egg situation going on there. We'll have to figure that yes. one out. Correct. Well, it actually makes sense to me. That means that any uh, OWAS chapter leader, they have to be a paid member for at least one year. Yeah. And I think that shows a level of commitment to the organization that, you know. Yeah, I, I totally support this because, you know, we have to lead by example. And, you know, if there's a chapter leader and they refuse to become a member of OWASP, what can we say about, you know, the OWASP's mission? Mm -hmm. Agreed. And that's why I sort of agree with the majority of the, organ of the, um, the members who believe that um, leaders should be paid. But... The, the board has a difficult situation on its hands and uh, I don't envy them at all. And so, um, as I said, we've got a board meeting later today and um, this is one of the topics of discussion. Are there any other questions? Yeah, Tom here, Tony Mir. Yeah, so I have a short question. If you, for instance, have uh, something like lifetime memberships that can be uh, that you can get. Uh, can a company sponsor an individual's lifetime membership? So yes. you're employed by a company and your company says, okay, we'll pay for like two or three lifetime memberships. Is this possible? Yes. And also, if you're in the United States, it's actually, we we treat donation, sorry, we treat memberships as donations. And so if you have donation match, um, grab a receipt because our membership is a donation and therefore you can have a tax deduction for it too. I have a quick We're, question, what he was just saying to clarify it, Andrew. Is he saying the company will own the membership and assign the person or goes he's buying it for the individual? No, no it, it's just for the individual. So the yeah. company pays for it, but it's for the individual. Right. Yes. And if you leave the company, it goes with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, okay. Exactly. I just wanted to make sure because sometimes there's yeah. other ones. Um, yes. No, yes, no, no, you no. can come. This is Lisa. Tomer, you could, um, if your company is interested in doing that, um, you can email me and I'll explain how that works. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's Lisa Jones. Jones. At, okay. At, at OWASP. OWASP. Com. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. We, we're not, we're not in the United States. We're from Croatia. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the three chapter leaders in Croatia. And that's one of the ways we decided to like solve this problem. If, if it's okay with you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we've done it in the Everyone. past. Yes, yes, yes. Reach out to me. I can I can help you with that. Okay. I put my I'm email to... address. Thank you. I'll contact you today and I'll send you whatever info I have okay. and let's let, let's solve this. Yeah. And also, 
Uh, the advantage yes. is that um, you need to check with your local government uh, taxation laws. For example, it's not just US, in the UK mm -hmm. as well, you know, the membership fee uh, to OWASP is considered to be a taxable deduction yeah. because yes. it is a professional association. So if yes. the uh, tax uh, mm -hmm. authority of your country recognizes OWASP as a professional association, then it can be tax deductible. So yes. it makes sense for the company to it, pay for it or for employee to basically expense it via the expenses. Yes, that's that's the same thing in Croatia. Professional association memberships are tax deductible. So awesome. I'd like to hear that. Okay. Thank thank you very much for your answers. No problems. Again, uh, we are planning to do this before the director elections. If you are interested in becoming a director, um, the nomination starts in August. You need to have been a member in good standing for a year as of September 30. Um, and basically, good luck, and I, I hope to see you at future town halls. Thank you for attending today. Wait, I'm just going to throw one out there when I have people. Okay, I'm asking individuals please get, get involved in our elections this year, especially WASPI, Board of Directors. Also, I'm handling all co-marketing now. If there are um, events in your uh, areas that you'd like to see OWASP get involved in or be co-marketing with, can you just send me some uh, names of events? Obviously, I don't know all popular local events in different regions. I'm like, I'm trying to open up since the world is open up for OWASP to be seen more. So if you have any developer conferences that are really good in London or anywhere else, can you just yeah. shout out some names? Or, and if you have a contact rate to see, maybe we can get a table out of them. I'll, I'll try to. John, I will ping you about security B-Sides London. We've been partnering with B-Sides uh, for okay. many years. And uh, Andrew has been signing the co-marketing agreement. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think for everyone on this call, there is a local B-Sides uh, conference, um, um, B-Sides um, uh, conference in almost every single country. So it's yeah, a we love very, very well. good conference to partner. And usually they provide to all of us uh, uh, free booth, which is very, very good. And of course, all of us logo displayed um, on all the materials of the conference and not displayed on the screen. But obviously there is a um, co-marketing agreement, a standard agreement, which just needs to be confirmed and signed. Yeah, we have stuff. Yeah, so if anyone has stuff, any developer conferences, just send me an email. Um, let me put my oh, everyone in thing. Dawn Aiken at OWASP.com. Really looking to, especially 2023, that we're really out there since the world is opening up. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, cool. No, no worries. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye bye. Thank bye -bye. you, everyone. Okay.